I guess I should ask Lee this question. Where does the story in Insidious come about? The story for Insidious was something that started with James and I trading ghost stories. It's kind of an organic process. I mean, as long as we've known each other, we've kind of told each other these ghost stories, the things that we've heard from people we've known, whether it be family or friends, and we've kind of built up this stockpile of um, really creepy ghost stories. And uh, eventually it gets to the point where you're like, we really need to utilize these stories in a film. So essentially, the, it's almost like the story of Insidious was created simply as a spine to hang these ghost stories off. You know? We can just come out with any old crap and just hang it off. You know? It's like creating an action film. Lee, you should give your writing a bit more credit than that. Uh, no, 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 no more credit you're than like, that. Uh, you're like, uh, you, you write your script like the same way the Zucker Brothers write their comedies. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a device to hang gags just off. Just gags, yeah. We're kind of almost just like that. I mean, we feel like we have a really good story, but, but we're utilising all this stuff that we've heard over the years. and put it As inspiration, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, Lee and I did have the, um, the genesis of the through line, the story through line, but we have all these scary stories that we've heard over the years, right, that we always felt would be amazing in, in a scary movie. And so, um, so, you know, back then when we would hear these stories, they would send chills up our spines. And, and you know, Lee and I would look at each other and go, why don't we apply that sort of, um, that, that sort of, um, um, you know, that, that kind of thinking into, into the movie that we're trying to make here. And so we did, you know, granted, um, you know, um, um, you know, we have to reject certain things. You know, the story didn't just kind of like fall into places. We have to rejig it to, to fit the um, the actual main story of the film, mm. um, but but I guess in a lot of ways I think um, why some of the scare scenes are as are as effective as they are is because in a lot of ways they were based on true stories. Mm. Let's talk about the creative process, the collaboration between both mm -hmm. of you. Has there been times that there there's been conflicts and how to resolve them and who wins? Uh, this is interesting. It depends what sort of conflicts you're talking about. If it's creative. Usually I'll have an idea and I'll tell James about it and he'll just shoot it down and that's the end of the discussion. Yeah. Uh, if you're talking about physical conflicts <laughs> where we oil each other down and get into some greco roman wrestling, I'm winning every time. I'll pin James inside of 30 seconds and I'll like, you know, I'll, I'll be like, go on, you know. I'll, I'll be like, smell, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, you know, I'll, I'll make him smell the dirt, I'll push his face into the dirt, hold him down, you know. So that's how you resolve your conflict. Yeah, I just I I, I say apologize, apologize, and he says no, and then I twist his arm. And he's like, sorry. <laughs> and then I leave that. Uh, uh, from a work standpoint, Lee and <laughs> you you just started as if they're not even going to use that answer. You just started exactly. as if he just answered that question. I, I know they're going to cut it out. It, sorry, they they they're going to cut it out. So I'm just going to pretend like that wasn't even in, it's been said. Well, you think they're going to cut it out? You think people, you think prospectors find big hunks of gold amongst rock, brush away the gold and keep the rock? <laughs> they take keep, the gold they keep the dirt. Um, That's what's worth something. Lee and I like to, um, we, we, we usually um, cook up concepts together, you know, like uh, I may have something that I, I throw at him and, uh, and you know, whether or not, you know, sometimes he likes it, sometimes he doesn't like usually it. Usually a piece of paper or a rock <laughs> Exactly, or a rock, something heavy that would hurt. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of like bat ideas back and forth. Um, you know, like he, he'll throw an idea for me and then I'll add to that and he'll add to my idea. And really, by the end of it, we don't really know who kind of started the concept, except mm, we know but that- our lawyers are trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a huge uh, <laughs> It's a huge lawsuit pending lawsuit. Pending, um, no, but, um, but it's, it, it, it's a great process because um, at the end of the day, it's a very collab collaborative process. Mm -hmm. And- um, James will often say to me, he's like, let's work as a team and do it my way. And uh, that's really our credo for working. That's true. That's true. The influences of uh, of this movie, we sense them Hitchcock, Hitchcock and uh, from the from the music, the, um, and, and even gra graphics and lightings. So, um, where else do you draw your influences from? Well, it's funny that you say Hitchcock because um, maybe not necessarily Hitchcock, because that guy's actually a good filmmaker. Um, <laughs> you don't consider yourself one? <laughs> no, I'm, ki I'm kidding. Um, but uh, definitely uh, a big inspiration from an aesthetic standpoint for, um, for Insidious um, were based on a lot of cl more classical old school horror films, you know, like the black and white films that they used to make back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, you know, like, like the Hammer Horror films to some degree, and, uh, and, and the Haunting, the, haunting, yep. um, the original Haunting, not the remake, um, and movies like The Innocents or The Changeling. Um, I find these films are really um, unnerving and creepy 
but yet you never really see anything. You know, they don't shock you with blood and guts. And, uh, and that's what I really wanted to capture, that, that classic. I, I, I'm somewhat of a classicist. You know, I, I really love that. I mean, that's the kind of film that I love to make. And it's so weird that Saw is considered a very contemporary um, scary movie because to me, it was actually in a lot of ways made like a very classical old school way, you know, like it has very suspenseful moments. But at the same time, um, it has moments that today's kids kind of want to see more, which is, you know, the fun stuff, as I call them, the, you know, the more blood and guts, the, the visceral stuff. Um, and, and even the first saw um, had, had that in a very finite amount, you know, it, was, it wasn't a lot of it. Um, with Insidious, I really want to prove that we can make a scary, suspenseful movie without, you know, without resorting to, um, you know, just your typical blood and guts. And, and it's not needed in a uh, classic, classical ghost story film. Referring to the series of Saw, Saw movies, mm -hmm. um, we can't escape the, the, it seems that it, the, the series of movies um, meditates on this topic of um, the value of life. Right. What would you say Insidious would be, injects a certain kind of moral issues into I, it? I, I have my theme when I was directing it, but I know Lee definitely has his when he was writing it, so mm. I'll let you speak on that. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, there's a few different things for me, but one of the things for Insidious, uh, in, in my opinion, is, is, is the march of time. This thing that we're all getting older, that there is this great unknown waiting out there that we're all going to, going to die. And that's why, you know, you see that in the film, that the character of Renee is reflecting on her marriage, how she used to be young, she wanted a career in music. You know, Josh, the character played by Patrick Wilson, is plucking out grey hairs and, and worrying about getting older. And it's this, the, to me, that's what this tick, the ticking clock in the film represents, to me, is the march of time. That we're all going along and then there's this great beyond and, and it all ties into the story of this, this boy who's in a coma. And, and only a couple of the reviewers have really picked up on that and I've been really happy when they have. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's really great when Lee writes, he, um, he, he likes to have... Um, the concept in mind first before he can actually write it because um, once he has the theme and the concept, the theme worked out, he, it really uh, um, it really kind of like channels the path and the way he would write the script and I think that's a great writing process for him. Um, for me too, um, the theme is no different to kind of what Lee has mentioned but for me the theme of the film when I was directing it is really the loss of innocence and which ties in with what Lee is saying, you yeah. know, getting older, you know, the older mm -hmm. you get you lose your innocence. And, and, and this film, in a lot of ways, is um, depicted, um, it, you know, in a classical horror movie way, which is, you know, monsters come after you, mm. and that's that's how you lose your innocence, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and it's um, and it's not just um, the main boy. Without giving the the backstory away, it 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 it, it, um, it happens to another character as well within the movie, um, mm -hmm. and so so it's it's this, I think, recurring theme in the film, and that that was one of the things that I was, you know, that I really kind of la latch onto for me. Yeah, making it. yeah, exactly. I think there's there's <coughs> definitely a thing relating to that where you know uh, old older people, and as you get as you get older, you want to be young again, and that theme is depicted very literally in the film <laughs> of uh, shall we say uh, older people wanting to be young again. It's yes. depicted in a very literal, in a very literal way. Yeah, horror um, movie way. And, yes. and that's really what it's about.